Good morning, and can I welcome everyone to this, the 12th meeting of the Standards Procedure and Public Appointments Committee in 2023. Edward Mountain has given his apologies this morning, so can I welcome Stephen Kerr to the meeting as a substitute member. Morning, Stephen. Um, agenda item one is a decision on taking business in private. Are members in agreement to take agenda item three in private along with future consideration of correspondence from the Parliamentary Bureau, standing order rule changes and code of conduct and code of conduct guidance changes in private? Are we agreed? Agreed. Excellent. Agenda item two is correspondence from Graham Day, MSP. Graeme Day wrote to the committee expressing a concern about the type and number of parliamentary motions that were being lodged to congratulate individuals or organisations. The committee has previously considered this letter and requested more information relating to congratulatory motions. SPICE has kindly prepared an analysis of the trends in the usage of motions that start with the term that the Parliament congratulates. And the paper provided by the clerk provides more information to the committee on the rules relating to the admissibility of motions. Um, would members like to take the opportunity to comment on both the report from SPICE, for which I thank them, but also the original correspondence from Graham Day? And if it pleases the committee who are here in person, um, I'm going to turn to my deputy convener who's joining us online today. Um, Bob, would you like to comment? Um. Thank you, convener. Um, and yeah, it's just some, some, some brief comments. The analysis is quite interesting. It does show a, a significant increase in those types of motions uh, up until the last parliamentary session, but this parliamentary session doesn't appear to be particularly higher. Uh, it may actually be tailing off a bit. That said, Mr D does make a, a reasonable point. Of course, it's the unintended consequences of restricting the rights of MSPs to lodge motions of recognition uh, for excellent work, whether by volunteers, charities or organisations in their constituencies. So I wouldn't want to see any changes to the procedures and protocols for lodging motions that restricted those opportunities. That said, and I think we had this discussion last time in Vera, um, I get that placing a motion of recognition for a very local good cause before Parliament and that of an equal weight for, say, a, a motion that is urging the Scottish Government or the UK Government to do something quite significant in tackling the cost of living crisis or tackling a, a matter of great public interest, that there may be an issue about whether there is a kind of parity and approach taken in the Parliament to each of those motions. But um, I am not sure we want to get in the road of a two-tiered motion system that would take uh, a bit more thought. But we could potentially in the future categorise motions and give them their own pathway in how they are publicised and promoted and recognised by Parliament. But I do not think we are there yet. I would be interested to see how the rest of this session pans out and be open to your views, Convener, on how we best take this forward in the future. That is very helpful. Thank you. Um, I know Stephen wants to come in. So, Stephen, yeah. can I pass over to you? So I, I have a lot of sympathy for what Graham Day is getting at, but I agree completely with Bob Doris. If I go further than Bob, I think um, I think it would be not in order for us to prescribe what members consider to be an appropriate motion to put before this Parliament. And I think it's already been suggested in private conversations that you know these these motions may not look much in the minds of those who read them who are sitting in this parliament. But for the people that are the focus of them and for what it means to them, you know, it means a great deal. So I, 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 I think I think leave things be. By all by all means monitor it, but leave things be and let members get on. And the, the members of the public can make up their own mind about the quality of the motions and whether they think they're, you know, whether that is going too far or not. But it, 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 the individual members must make that self-governing choice for themselves, convener. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, I know Emma, you'd like to come in? Thank you. Thanks, convener. Um, so, I, like Stephen, I think um, I sympathise with what 
uh, Graham Day's letter is about, but uh, you know, in in instances where people are living quite remote and rurally from this place, um, a motion is. It, it, it's really, really beneficial. People feel uh, that they're heard. They feel as if their work is valued, whether it's a uh, charity, whether it's um, local action that's t taken forward. We all have motions related to our cross-party group work as well. Um, today, I've got a motion about World Asthma Day, and uh, and there will be a debate in chamber about that motion. So. I know not all motions are for debate, some are just in recognition or in congratulations. So I would be keen to m monitor it and, uh, um, and, and see how we get on. But I wouldn't like to prescribe to colleagues whether they should be writing motions in a particular way or not. That's very helpful. Alexander, is there anything you'd like to...? Yes, convener. I think, I think the analysis is very useful to have to show where we are and, and how we have progressed through the various sessions and the, where we find ourselves at this point. Uh, I think, as other members have indicated, uh, there is uh, a balance to be struck, uh, I think, about motions itself, and, uh, and this has been discussed in the past. But, as others have said today, I think it's very important that we, as members, have that right to have a recognition of individuals, organisations uh, within our regions or in our constituencies, uh, because it is a very valid part of our role uh, to ensure that these individuals, unsung heroes, are given a chance. Uh, but at the same time, other motions are very largely supportive of other things that happen within. Uh, and I think there, there are categories within motions, I think, is the best way to describe it. Uh, uh, and you know, we, we all receive them. Uh, and it may be our, our, our staff who may help to make them happen, uh, but at the same time, it's our constituents that receive and get the recognition. So I think Emma's point about trying to uh, monitor uh, may be the best way to try and uh, manage this, to see if there is a, a surge or if there is... Uh, and we have to acknowledge the, the work that the Chamber Desk have to do to manage the number of motions that are submitted on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Uh, and the analysis there is also quite useful to see that they, they have had uh, some changes, so that's maybe helped them uh, in, in dealing with the dilute of motions that come on a, a regular basis. So uh, I'm content that we continue, but I'm also content that we monitor uh, for the future, because I think that would be useful. I think that's very helpful. Emma, do you want to come back in? Yes, please. Thanks, convener. I was just thinking, I know, I mean, Alexander mentions the chamber desk, and I know the chamber desk is a small team, so is, is this really overly, is it burdensome for them to manage motions? Because, yes, there are a lot of motions, and, uh, and I know uh, some people would have certain things to say about motions that they might not find as valuable and but we've covered that already but i would be interested to find out how how the chamber desk uh, feel about it i mean are are they uh, burdened by so many motions it's helpful and stephen and then i'll come on to the thing. back of that call from emma I get, going back to my principle which is members need to be free to submit the motions they feel are appropriate if there is a problem with the chamber desk um, and I'm not sure there is, um, then we'd have to rectify that from the corporate body bureau angle. Because, again, I just think members need to be free to do what they feel is right in respect to the interests of their constituents. And uh, I think we've made the case for the fact that these motions, however other people might judge them, are very valuable for communities and organisations and individuals. And to somehow have that censored or restricted or cancelled would be wholly inappropriate. Um, Bob, I know you'd like to come back in. Thank you, thank you, Kimira. Just very briefly, I, I concur with Mr Kerr. I don't think that's the intent, but I, but I do concur with the views of Mr Kerr. It's when uh, Emma Harper mentioned the, the Chamber Desk. Now, the, the individuals that work in the Chamber Desk are not just employees of the Parliament. They've built up years of expertise and they will have seen patterns themselves in, in relation to the content and nature of motions. And I would very much appreciate their views as individual professionals and in how they think matters have changed over the years. And taking on the point that uh, Stephen has, has, has made, 
without any intent to restrict. They may have views as individual professionals about how motions can be categorised differently, innovative suggestions. And I, I'm not saying that they should be in the public clear because they're employees, but if we can capture some of their their views and expertise should be returned to this in the future. And I think that would be quite helpful. Of course, we're caught we're parliamentary colleagues because this is for the elected representatives to decide. But I'm just conscious we've got significant expertise in the parliament uh, who will have seen fads and motions come and go, quite frankly, convener, and they will be very close to how this has played out over over many years. So if we do return to it, I'd be quite keen to draw on the experience of those who work for us diligently within the chamber desk. I think that's very helpful, and can I thank the committee for all of their views um, and opinions on it? And I think, for a start, we need to understand that the motion is the vehicle that is used to bring anything to the attention of the chamber. And I think we are in agreement um, that there is a responsibility on individual members of that chamber. The standing orders relating to motions are very clear. It sets out how a motion is to be admissible um, rather than the content or expectation or perhaps, may I say, hope of some motions that come before the chamber. But I think to pick up a discussion that a number of members have reflected the importance to our constituents of the recognition um, that this chamber notes their work, be it in a congratulatory way or other matters. And I and I, Emma, your comments um, about the cross-party groups, I think, is very important. I also think, to go back to the analysis from Spice, we are not so far out of the expectation um, that it is perhaps in actuality the concern that perhaps some members have felt. And I hope members will be reassured that if we continue to monitor the situation um, which we will uh, undertake to do over the next 12 months to see whether or not we move away from the expectation which might be the trigger for us to return. Um, with regard to the, the, the chamber desk, obviously the clerks there serve the chamber um, and the expertise lies there. And I note um, your suggestion, Bob, and certainly if um, we were to consider an inquiry into this matter, we would, of course, seek evidence from all relevant and experienced bodies to feed in um, to our view. But at the moment, um, if the committee is content, um, I would write to Graeme Day, you know, thank him for expressing a concern that's not just his, but has been raised by other members, but that we will, and I don't mean this to, to um, disparage the idea, take a watching brief, to see if this session continues the way the previous sessions have, and we'll continue to monitor the effect and use of the um, motion system. Are we content to do that? Yes. Yes. Say, I'm grateful. Then that being the last of the matters that we intend to deal with in public, I will uh, move the committee now into private session. <laughs>